Let me go ahead and give you uh, another slide over here to talk about the different types of glasses. Let's go ahead and take a look at the glasses that you might be using when you're editing. You've got a number of different choices to think about. So I've showed you the list, so let's talk about some of the details. Some of the first glasses you might have been exposed to would be these red and blue glasses. Um, not only do you look like an idiot with some of these 1950s technology, um, but they really don't give you that great of an image. It's okay for aligning things, but your color gets pretty washed out. Um, your edges actually look pretty good with this, but they, they really are kind of dated and there's some better solutions out there as far as colored glasses go. Um, you'll see these uh, newer design ones and some TV shows have actually used this. Uh, Shark Week, I think I use these with, and they're green and magenta uh, glasses and they actually look uh, you know, you still look like an idiot wearing them, but the image that's on there, you actually get a pretty good image. The color uh, retains itself okay, and the edges look pretty sharp, and it actually works out pretty good um, for editing anaglyph. I typically have the best luck with uh, these amber and blue glasses for retaining color. It actually works pretty good. I got these, uh, I think at a trade show, they were showing Monsters vs. Aliens, and uh, they work really great for me. Now, one of the questions I get is, hey, you know, do I really have to deal with paper glasses? Uh, I see these plastic glasses out there, and you're right, there's plenty of these plastic colored glasses uh, you'll see them on Amazon. They run about four dollars or so, uh, and they actually work okay. Uh, I've also got a set of amber blue ones here, and I've got some uh, some red blue ones as well. So I spent a lot of time playing with uh, these different glasses, and again, they're all relatively cheap. But I have to be honest with you, uh, the paper glasses actually give you a much better image, and I started doing some research on why, and it really boils down to. Um, you know, pretty simple thing. These actually use a film that uh, they use for lenses. These actually use plastic and they have to sort of mix the plastic at the right color in order to get that exactly right. And plastic, of course, has different properties uh, versus film that's been exposed and developed. So this is uh, a much better technology uh, as far as giving you a crisper image. So you can test that out for yourself. But for my result, I typically use um, paper glasses and it's been pretty good and again, giving me um, the best result. Now, what about uh, polarized glasses? These are the technology that you see in the movie theater like you know Avatar and Toy Story and uh, these are actually the glasses uh, that I used at the, uh, the last 3D movie I saw, so real 3D glasses. Uh, my local theater is actually tossing them uh, or just telling you to, to bring them home. They're not even recycling them anymore. And they actually work great uh, with monitors like this Hyundai monitor that you see up here. Uh, I've got one of these monitors and it works great with these glasses. I have found a way to get a better image uh, when you're dealing with passive glasses. Again, passive technology meaning the glasses um, have no battery, they're not powered. And that's using a company called Microvision Optical. Uh, not only do you get a better looking pair of glasses, and these run about $35 or $45 or so, depending on the model that you get, they actually have better optics in the glasses, and I get a crisper image on that Hyundai display, and there's some other passive displays. So I highly recommend these glasses, uh, or this company, and you can look at their website, I'll go ahead and put it up here for you, where you can go ahead and check uh, out the different glasses that they have, but assured that the image is gonna look great. Now, what about viewing monitors like you see in the uh, electronic stores, these new consumer 3D television sets? Well, I went down there and picked up one, and uh, they actually come with, or you have to buy them separate, with uh, active glasses. That, again, these are glasses that are powered, and the image looks absolutely amazing. It's just jumping right at you out of a 50-inch or 40-inch display, and the prices are actually uh, are not as high as I would have expected. Uh, they started about uh, $1,400, maybe $1,500, and go right on up. Uh, and I've looked at a bunch of them, and you can pretty much use any of them uh, with our workflow that I'm going to show you today. And I'll be featuring the Panasonic Vera series uh, in this series that I'm showing you, and that monitor works great. But really, any of the 3D monitors out there work great. Now, the best way to view your image, and I get this question a lot, and I'll go over some of this in the workflow uh, guide as well. And the, the, the best image that you can possibly get is to go ahead and buy a 3D monitor and a 3D 
um, pair of glasses, what they call active glasses. And the 3D vision glasses from uh, NVIDIA are bar none the best that I've used out there. You can put these glasses on and while you're in Premiere Pro, as I said before, you're just editing. It, you have a nice looking interface, uh, no horizontal interlacing going on. It looks absolutely great. So you can just go ahead and start editing. Your program monitor is coming right at you. You can glance over it. Your second head monitor, if you have two of these monitors, like this Alienware display that you see over here. The editing is absolutely amazing. So for editing, I highly recommend these glasses. You can actually uh, mix the workflow. You can actually have um, you know, maybe a consumer television set as your second monitor and have an NVIDIA uh, glasses paired up with a uh, uh, Alienware display. That's going to work great. Obviously, you'll be switching glasses back and forth. And really, once you get into editing, uh, you might not even be editing a lot in 3D. Once you know everything is set up, you pretty much just take your glasses off and edit off of the left eye. It's really pretty amazing. Now let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro and take a look at this workflow. Now I want to mention for my Mac users out there, I did go ahead and get my hands on the uh, early development plugin for the Mac and I am going to show you guys how that works. It's coming along great and it should be shipping shortly. Uh, summer 2010 is what they're telling us and this is currently July 2010 so hopefully it's not too far off. But I've got my hands on the plugin and I've been testing it daily and it's coming along great. So you guys just hang tight, watch the workflow for Windows. It's pretty much exactly the same with what you need to deal with as far as the ins and outs of videos go with a few interface changes, which I'll share with you at the end. So let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro and catch the action in 3D. Once you've got Premiere Pro CS5 installed, the next step is to get the Neo 3D or Neo HD plugins installed. If you don't have those already and you're just trying it out, head over to Cineform's site and download the tryout. What you'll see when you get there is there's three basic products for the editing 3D category. There's Neo HD, which supports up to 1080. Neo 4K and Neo 3D. The main difference between Neo HD and the 4K and 3D products are the additional resolutions that they support as well as some additional options. Uh, the higher end products support 2K, 3K, and 4K editing and additional keyframing editing abilities as well as independent left eye, right eye adjustments, ghost busting, and they even support dual link SDI stereo for things like real projectors that you see in the movie theaters. Click on the Neo HD and then click on Try It. Once you fill out the appropriate fields and you get your email with your download link, you should go ahead and get a copy of the Neo 3D or Neo HD plugin. Just double click on it and follow the prompts. As I mentioned in the intro video, it's extremely important to keep track of your left eye assets and your right eye assets. So let's go see how I've done this. I'm going to go ahead and jump onto my video hard drive. And here you'll see I have my project called Annapolis in 3D. And I went ahead and created two additional folders, left eye SD card and right eye SD card. For my left eye SD card, I went ahead and copied the entire contents of the folder, just grabbing the root folder, which is the private folder, and dragged it directly into the left eye SD card folder. Let's go ahead and do the same for the right eye. And as you see, the topmost folder in this case is called a private folder. Just drag that directly in and let it copy. The next step is to go ahead and convert your SD card footage into the award-winning Cineform Kodak. This gives you the quality of uncompressed 10-bit with only about 15% of the file size. And it also gives you the ability to add active metadata, which we're going to go ahead and cover later. The next step is pretty easy. It's converting your files into the Cineform codec. So before I do that, let me go ahead and show you what the original files look like. Let's go ahead and navigate back into my Annapolis. 